So how can sound escape when even light itself cannot escape? What you're actually listening to is vibrations. You gotta hang on that object to get those data. Space is a mysterious place. Astronauts and space explorers encounter a lot of things that are quite extraordinary. Every time we send people into space, they return with extraordinary data that might be used by scientists and academics. Two essential pieces of equipment have made, and continue to make, significant contributions to space development. These two machines were launched into orbit many years ago, but even now the results they continue to produce are astounding. Not all of it, though, is good news for us. These spacecraft have been able to investigate some rather alarming things in the space beyond us. What did they find? And how terrifying is it? Let's find out. The Voyager twins are in many respects relics of their period. They each contain an 8-track tape recorder for storing data, 3 million times less memory than contemporary cell phones, and a data transmission rate that is around 40,000 times slower than a 5G internet connection. The Golden Record, which has greetings in 55 different languages, images of people and locations on Earth, and music ranging from Beethoven to Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good, belongs to them both. The missions haven't garnered much attention in recent years, but project scientist Ed Stone has overseen the small spacecraft's continuous outward travels. As the only spacecraft that have ever been through interstellar space, the Voyagers still represent the cutting edge of space exploration, despite having outdated memory and transmission capabilities. Let us dive into some essential bits of the two spacecraft. A significant step was made in August 1977 to advance space exploration. This movement was led by NASA because they thought space exploration needed to be given more priority. NASA had the idea that they needed to expand on this eight years after Neil Armstrong made that stride on the Moon's surface. With the Voyagers being sent into orbit, NASA believed they were doing the right thing. To assist us and get a taste of what is out there in space, Voyagers 1 and 2 were launched into orbit. The Voyagers provided an excellent pathway to the exploration and study of our neighboring planets, which were just waiting to be found and discovered. As Earth's first representatives to the outer planets, the twin Voyager spacecraft captivated the public's attention in the 1970s and 80s by taking up close pictures of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. On August 17, 1977, Voyager 2 was the first spacecraft to launch into orbit. Voyager 1 followed on September 5th. Moving forward to the present, the Voyagers have done an amazing job thus far, and even after 46 years, they are still going strong. With distinct projected trajectories, both spacecraft share the same build. Voyager 1 was focused on getting us pictures of Saturn's rings and its biggest moon, Titan. Later, Voyager 2 was launched with an even bigger assignment. It was launched into space to observe the planets that are close to us and the environment of Earth. The Voyager's mission's irony lies in the fact that it was launched into orbit for a roughly five-year duration. This year, it has lasted 46 years, and there are still no signs of it ending. The researchers that worked on the Voyager should be commended for their achievement. Making a machine that outlives its useful life is not simple. This isn't your PlayStation where you keep it clean and it functions flawlessly. The Voyager 1's equipment may be the first on the scene to be able to detect the border between the magnetic field of the Sun and the region between the stars known as interstellar space. We now move on to the interstellar mission which is related to interstellar. The goal of the Voyager's interstellar mission is to take NASA's exploration program beyond the solar system's outer planets and into space itself. This is because if efforts are made to discover it, the potential that lies beyond is enormous and its significance cannot be adequately expressed. This mission will keep characterizing the environment of the outer solar system and look for the heliopause boundary the furthest limits of the Sun's magnetic field, and the solar wind's outward movement. 
Accurate observations will be possible due to the solar wind's penetration of the heliopause boundary between it and the interstellar medium. The interstellar mission extends the Voyager mission, which was finished in 1989 when it flew near Neptune, which is a significant point to note. The last outer planets that a Voyager spacecraft visited was Neptune. As Voyager 1 sailed close to Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 2 flew close to Neptune and Uranus. The Voyager 1 is traveling 35 degrees north of the ecliptic plane in the approximate direction of the solar apex as it leaves our solar system at a pace of 3.6 astronomical units per year. The direction of the Sun's velocity in relation to its neighborhood stars is where the Sun's peak is located. Voyager 2, on the other hand, is also leaving the solar system, doing so at a rate of around 3.3 astronomical units per year. Voyager 1 is traveling through uncharted territory in outer space. Anything can go wrong when things are so far away. Moreover, keep in mind that these are antique craft. Hence, NASA engineers would have been excused for calling it a day and pouring one out for possibly the greatest successful space mission of all time when Voyager 1 started to transmit home strange, jumbled nonsense instead of telemetry data. But NASA doesn't operate that way. Instead, they got to work on the record-breaking spacecraft's remote diagnosis and repair. They have achieved victory now after some time. As if nothing ever occurred, Voyager 1 is back online and communicating flawlessly with ground control. As straightforward as anything can be with a 22-hour communications lag in either direction and billions of miles of space between, the patch really did prove successful. What actually transpired on Voyager 1 then? The 46-year-old spacecraft, which was cruising in interstellar space, seemed to be performing amazingly well and was sending reams of data back to Earth. Nevertheless, Voyager 1's Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, which keeps the spacecraft's high-gain antenna pointing towards Earth, began transmitting incomprehensible jumbles of data instead of the customary updates on the condition and health of the spacecraft. From our vantage point, it seemed as though the spaceship had suffered something akin to an electronic aphasia, a disorder that results in the loss of fluent speech. The data may appear to be randomly generated or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in, explained NASA in a statement from the time. Engineers were even more perplexed by the fact that Voyager 1 seemed to be in fine shape, despite the spacecraft's strange status updates. The ship's radio signal remained strong and constant, indicating that the antenna was still oriented at Earth and not in the position that the AACS had claimed in its reports to NASA. Similar to how the AACS continued to function normally, without any of the same strangeness, Voyager 1's science systems continued collecting and transmitting data as usual. Also, the fault protection system intended to put the spacecraft into safe mode when there is a glitch did not trip due to whatever was wrong with the AACS. At last, NASA engineers found the issue. With the diagnosis, they may also apply a treatment. The solution? It was discovered that the AACS had begun transmitting its telemetry data via an onboard computer that had long since malfunctioned. All of the data sent out was tainted by the deceased machine. All NASA engineers had to do was instruct the AACS to relay its data home using the appropriate computer. There is still an issue though, because the next task is to determine precisely what prompted the AACS to swap computers in the first place. According to NASA, the system most likely took a bad command from another onboard computer. The true offender will need to be located and addressed in order to stop further weirdness even though they claim that it is not now a serious concern for Voyager 1's well-being. Voyager 1 is currently farther away from Earth than 23.4 billion kilometers, 14.6 billion miles, and growing for the most part. Voyager 1 has been traveling into interstellar space outside the magnetic field of our solar system for the past 10 years. Similar to how Earth's magnetic field provides some protection from high-energy particles and radiation from the Sun, 
the field had provided the craft with some shielding from cosmic rays and other interstellar radiation. Since cosmic rays are known to interfere with electronics on Earth, it is reasonable to expect that Voyager 1's onboard computers will experience similar problems. For example, when one of those high-speed energetic particles strikes a computer chip, it can result in minor memory errors that accumulate over time. On the other hand, there is Voyager 2's connection to extraterrestrials. Did it really happen? And how much of it is true? Voyager 2 is quite far away from Earth. For context, consider that it takes the command sent from the Earth 13 hours to reach this probe. But information isn't always sent as clearly as it should be. It wasn't until the end of 2021 that it was realized the explorer may have encountered an anomalous bug. The conspiracy theorist that came running about at this glitch immediately transformed into a hot rumor. There was a suggestion that aliens may have been able to locate the Voyager 2 probe and reprogrammed it to interfere with the communication between it and Earth. This might have just been dismissed as junk, but according to a German specialist, this glitch can only be the result of extraterrestrial intervention. The Telegraph in the UK also came forward and expanded on rumours, taking the word of a UFO expert without comparing it to reliable information from someone who is knowledgeable about space. This was only done to get views and sell copies. The likelihood that a UFO or aliens were involved in this operation is still far from certain, and the most plausible scenario is that something went wrong with the Voyager's programming. But the alien theory is questionably one that may be debated for a very long time. Why? Because it involves curiosity and something people have been searching for for a very long time. It goes beyond mere supposition. If there are aliens, they wouldn't just muck with the settings of a machine floating on their land, would they? Or perhaps it's a warning for us to avoid them? Whatever it is, it defies logic to a significant degree and we prefer not to knock on a door with a brick wall on the other side. This is an excellent material for speculating and should be treated with caution. The Voyager mission should continue with all its strength, as it is what will advance us in this field and that should be our main goal. The aliens may be sending signals to keep us away since they may be too afraid to confront us later. Now that makes for good speculation. Both spacecraft are much older than what the mission planners had anticipated, almost 46 years old. We are also in interstellar space, which is a highly radioactive region that has never been explored by a spacecraft. Plutonium-238, which has an 88-year half-life, powers the Voyagers. When they first launched, they seemed to last an eternity. But now that half of that time has passed, there isn't much base power left to run the spacecraft. Voyager's ongoing mission, which dares to venture where no spacecraft has gone before, is truly amazing. We'll have to wait and see what fresh threats and discoveries Voyager encounters next on its journey. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.